I would hope that you would uh, them along with me. First, we have uh, Mr. John Maiello, our Vice Principal in charge of the senior class. <laughs> Ms. Weir, our other Vice Principal. <laughs> our Supervisor of Guidance, Mrs. Virginia Marr, who without we could not have this evening. And the counselors who have worked so hard with your children over the past four years, we have Ms. Gina Galliano, <laughs> Mrs. Seal DeGeorge, <laughs> Mrs. Cynthia Gorkowski, <laughs> Mrs. Joyce Savastano, <laughs> and Mr. Bruce Keogh. Our department supervisors of curriculum instruction are here. I know I have seen, and they will all be here this evening, they will all be uh, giving out awards, but I know I've seen Mrs. Auerbach already. I've seen Mr. Uh, Defina and Mr. Grieco. And at this time, uh, it is my great privilege to introduce to, uh, to you uh, our superintendent of schools, Dr. John Seco. Thank you, Ken. Tonight's all about the hard work of these fabulous young people sitting to my right, and also about the parents who support the children up on stage. Without the parental support and everybody working together, they may not have achieved what they achieved. I'd like to take this time to thank the various organizations and presenters for the generous donations that the young people have worked very hard for. And also, we have a special announcement. A major magazine came out with statistics for the Wayne School District. So I'd like to have my director of high school, some of you know, he was the former principal of Wayne Hills, Mr. Frank Markowick, some people call him Bud Markowick, to share with everybody in the audience the announcement that just came out a few hours ago. So Mr. Bud Markowick. Thank you, Dr. Seco. Uh, the good news, there'll be a lot of good news tonight. I, I think you all know that. And I see another auditorium full of uh, parents and community people supporting uh, the efforts of the Wayne Hill students. Uh, and this senior class uh, was a very special class indeed. Uh, Newsweek magazine, again, has come out with the top uh, America's best high schools. Uh, Wayne Hills, uh, although we ranked 1224th in the nation. It doesn't sound like much, but it put us in about the 4.8% uh, of American high schools. So we're up there uh, very high. Also, 49 schools from New Jersey made it, and uh, Wayne Hills uh, was number 40, but uh, that is, it itself is a distinction because uh, if you've uh, been reading, or the, in fact, it's probably not out in Education Week yet, uh, New Jersey, Iowa, and I want to say Illinois, uh, were the top states uh, in high school graduation rates and uh, some of the testing, uh, standardized testing scores. So we are in a very good state, and, and we're a very competitive uh, district. Uh, Wayne Valley also received uh, recognition uh, in this initiative. Uh, just, this may be the last time I'll speak to this group, and uh, it seems like I've been gone forever. 
but it's a very special class. It's a class that when they came in as freshmen and sophomores, they developed. And you could see the leadership potential, uh, all of the individual students that did so many wonderful things. Uh, their outreach to community, the service, uh, you know, when our band is as good as our band was, the marching band, uh, when our plays look like college productions, uh, our athletic department had a wonderful year. Uh, I always believe that senior leadership is responsible for the outcomes uh, in a high school. And I think that the senior leadership uh, was second to none, I'm sure, in the history of Wayne Hills. So this is a very special group of people, and I'm very proud of them, and I know you are too. So I want to congratulate you. I, I'll probably see you Friday, many of you at the 4-0, but I'll, I know I'll see you at graduation. Um, I want to thank you for all you've done for Wayne Hills, and I want to wish you all well uh, as you go to your next adventure. So good luck, and thank you. Okay, enjoy the evening, okay? Good luck. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Markwick and Dr. Seiko. At this time, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Mr. Christopher Rotella from the Coast Guard Academy of Missions Partner, graduated in 1995 who will do an induction of our own Holly Bastinick. <laughs> Mr. Rotella. Well, good evening. I hope I'm the first of uh, many great presentations tonight. At ceremonies like this, it's traditional to briefly discuss the significance of a service academy appointment. Cadets swear an oath to protect and service and defend the Constitution. As member of the armed forces, they may give their life in defense of our nation. Thus, an appointment is not only an honor, but a privilege and an obligation stending, stemming from our founding days. In the Coast Guard case, this goes back to 1790, when President George Washington needed two things, money to run a new nation and protection from potential enemies. In one of its first legislative acts, the Centennial Congress formed the Revenue Cutter Service, the precursor of your Coast Guard today. The Coast Guard protects our economy, our borders, our environment, and ordinary citizens in our way of life, right here at home during times of war and peace. Many will, will, be, many will recall the heroic rescue of 33,000 Americans struck by Hurricane Katrina. 135 years ago, our need for a formal method of training officers was apparent. The Revenue Cutter School of Instruction was formed in 1876. Today, the Coast Guard Academy continues, continues its long tradition of leadership, educating and training most of our seagoing officers. This summer, 275 cadets will enroll, graduating four years later with a Bachelor of Science and a commission as the ensign in the Coast Guard. As many as you may know, the Coast Guard Academy is tuition free. Many are, co are curious about the, the value of this scholarship. It equates to approximately $300,000. However, that's not what this is about. This presentation is about a commitment to a higher purpose, our core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. As a representative of the superintendent of the Coast Guard Academy, I'm here to tell you that many apply, but few are chosen. Tonight, it's my privilege to recognize a graduate of your high school has been chosen to join the long line of Coast Guard officers that date back to our founding days as a nation. I'd like to ask Holly Bassnick to come up and accept her appointment to the United States Coast Guard Academy.
you, Mr. Rotello, and congratulations, Holly. Uh, at this time, it is my privilege to uh, ask up to the stage Mr. Edward Zambrano, who is the uh, chairman of our Community Scholarships Board. Mr. Zambrano. Good evening. Besides my duties here at Wayne Hills as a teacher of mathematics, I am also proud to be the chairman of the Wayne Scholarship and Honors Board. Through the generosity of many community organizations, corporations, and families, we fund these awards. Each scholarship has been established to achieve two objectives. First, the donors wish to recognize the outstanding accomplishments and achievements of each recipient. Second, the donors have established the scholarship to show their support and appreciation to the community and in some cases, honoring or memorializing an individual who has touched their lives. On behalf of the Wayne Scholarship and Honors Board, I congratulate the members of the class of 2009 and their families. In addition, I would like to publicly thank the donors for their continued support over these years. This evening, we will be awarding in this community scholarship portion a total of $50,000 this year. Here to present the first community scholarship is um, Mr. Joseph T.F. Lito for the Danny F. Lito Memorial Scholarship. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here again, um, as Mr. Zambrano indicated. My name is Joe Afflito, Jr. I'm here representing the Danny Afflito Memorial Scholarship Fund. Uh, it was a fund developed uh, after the uh, tragic incident uh, involving the, the circumstances surrounding uh, September 11th. Uh, my brother was killed in that incident. Uh, he was a graduate of Wayne Hills High School. 1987, and the family, my mom and my dad and I, decided that we needed to do something positive uh, to try and overcome the negative and uh, to give back to the students and the graduates of the Wayne Hills High School class, seniors graduating, to try and help out with the increasing costs and expenses associated with college. Uh, we decided to start this fund and have fundraisers for the sole purpose of the benefit of the Wayne Hills High School graduates. Um, this year's award winners, we, we, do, we used to do one, now we do two. Uh, it goes to a young man and a young woman uh, that essentially have the same qualities and the same uh, personalities uh, and the same types of uh, extracurriculars that my brother had while he was a student here. Um, in essence, what we tried to do is we tried to, and we've developed it over the years, we tried to make this award available to a young man and a young woman that possesses the same types of qualities uh, and academics that my brother had while he was here at Wayne Hills High School. Uh, the young man this year, and I hope I pronounced this right, a $2,500 check to Michael C.R. Varela. And the award to the young woman goes to Molly Flockavento. Thank you very much. To present the BAE System Scholarship, I introduce to you Mr. Ed DeYoung. Good evening and congratulations to the 2009 Wayne Hills High School senior class. A couple of years ago, employees from BA Systems 
met with the superintendent of Wayne Schools and the faculty members of the math and science department at Wayne Hills High School in order to establish a partnership that would involve our employees in a community activity that would build a relationship between our business community and the high school. <clears throat> we started the program of mentoring students who had difficulty in math and science. The immediate result was an increase in student scores that led to more interest in helping students with their studies. The program was then expanded to tutor students for PSAT and SAT, SAT exams. The program now involves over 30 employees who volunteer all of their time. In addition, BA Systems has expanded its partnership with Wayne Hills by inviting students to our facility to learn about new and emerging technologies. We hope that someday some of these students may seek employment with our company. Judging by the number of letters we receive from parents, educators, and township officials, we think that this initiative is working and has helped us to establish a, a strong partnership with the youth of our community. This evening, I'm here representing BA Systems and will be presenting scholarships to two well-deserving students. The scholarship recipients are Prasusha Maduri and, and Ariane Rizbenya. Thank you very much. Here to present the Barry Goldstein Memorial Scholarship is Mrs. Goldstein. Good evening. I'd like to begin by extending congratulations to the young men and women of the uh, 2009 graduating class. In 1999, our daughter Barry entered the Wayne Hills Special Ed Program. It was here that she made friends for the first time, real friends, girls and boys with similar problems who she could enjoy and socialize with. Barry was so happy at Wayne Hills. That's why uh, after her death in 2005, her father and I decided to set up this scholarship fund for $2,000 a year for um, a young man or woman uh, and it was our way of keeping her memory alive. And in some small measure, we hoped it would offer aid to a student who was striving towards a worthwhile future. On behalf of my husband and I, it is our honor to present the Barry Goldstein Memorial Scholarship this year to Christine Campbell. Our next scholarship is the Bethany Korean Community Scholarship presented by Dr. E. Young Lee. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Korean Congregation of Bethany Church, I'm honored to present this award to a very special young person, Stephanie Julius. Our next scholarship is the BP Lubricants USA Incorporated Scholarship. This scholarship is, in, is given to two students who represent those ideals and criteria as established by the corporation. 
This year's recipients are Joyce Cho and Neha Jarawala. Briar Animal Studies Scholarship is presented to a student who will be attending the uh, North Carolina State University studying animal sciences. I am pleased to announce the recipient is Jody Josephs. I call to the podium Mrs. Patty Tahan, manager of Colwell Bankers Associates of Wayne. How are you? I just said to them, I want to come back and be like you guys. <laughs> if I only knew then, right? Uh, my name is Patty Tahan. I'm happy to manage the Colwell Banker office in Wayne, New Jersey. And more important, uh, we're so proud of the community we serve the education that we're able to offer these fine students and proud just to represent everyone between Wayne Day and the wonderful events that we have. But more importantly, people come from all areas of national and international countries and they settle in Wayne because of these wonderful students in the grades. People don't realize, I know the taxes are high, but people don't realize that's what keeps our, keeps our values of our homes up. It is the children, it is the community, it is their grades, and that's why they come here. So I thank you all for supporting whatever we could. There's nothing better than this. <sighs> I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, This is not a, a corporate award. This is given from the Associates of Colwell Banker, and this has been, I think, our 15th year we give to both high schools. We're very proud to be part of this community, and our scholarship this year goes to uh, Kinoko Abe, Another one as beautiful as her name. You are as beautiful as your name, sweetheart. Best of wishes, sweetheart. God bless you. Our next scholarship is the Stephen R. Fava Memorial Scholarship presented by Mr. Ronald Fava. Good evening. Stephen was a 2007 uh, graduate of Wayne Hills. Um, and I'm pleased to present this scholarship, these two scholarships tonight uh, in his memory. On behalf of uh, his mother, Gloria, his sister, Valerie, uh, and myself, and in memory of my beloved son and best friend, we are pleased to award these two scholarships to Paul Seltzer. to uh, Heejin Kim. <laughs> to present the David Fight Memorial Scholarship, I call to the podium Mr. Michael Shear. for tonight. I'm Franny Fight. Michael wanted to be here. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the David Fight Memorial Foundation, I'm pleased to be here to present our seventh annual DFM Wayne Hill Scholarship. David was a 1976 graduate of Wayne Valley High School. He completed his undergraduate degree at Muhlenberg College and he graduated from the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine. After dental school, he returned home to Wayne to practice dentistry with his father. After his passing in July 2002, David's friends and family formed the DFM Foundation, whose mission is to raise funds that will benefit youth activities. 
Tonight's recipient was chosen based on similar qualities that David exhibited while in high school, namely strong academics, athletic involvement, and basically just being an all-around good person. Congratulations to all of tonight's honorees. The 2009 David Fight Memorial $2,500 Scholarship winner is Raj Dave. On behalf of the Wayne Junior, uh, Junior Women's Club of Wayne, the Outstanding Woman Leader Scholarship is presented to Grace Cha. <laughs> to present the Leo Grand Sport Leadership Award, I introduce Mr. Michael J. S. Um, Epstein. Good evening. My name is Michael Epstein. I'm a 1989 graduate of Wayne Hills High School, and it's hard to believe that 20 years ago I was sitting with where they are. Um, my, I'm here as the president of the class of 1989, and my, our award is as much an honor of the teachers who we named the award after as as much for the student tonight. Uh, Mr. Spall and Mrs. Leah Graham were our class advisors and advised many other classes um, before hours in 1989 and after hours. And they taught us what leadership was about. They taught us what it meant, what it was to mean about this, to care about this school and, it, and what it meant to be involved with this school. And a lot of the characteristics and traits that I learned from them in sitting around after school talking about ways to improve our class or raise money has carried through with me um, today, to today. And I can't say enough about Mrs. Leah Grant and Mr. Sport, who were just wonderful teachers and wonderful people. And this, our class wanted to honor them by establishing a scholarship in their name so that after they were no longer teaching, they would still be remembered. So our award is, um, going to a student who exhibits the characteristics that we thought was important after Mr. Spalt and Mrs. Leogrand, which is leadership, being, caring about the community and civic endeavors, and being also a good person. I congratulate everyone else on the stage, but tonight we are giving this to Alexandra Caparuso. Our next scholarship is the Michael Lafredo Scholarship. This year's scholarship recipient is Danielle Sanfilippo. <laughs> to present the McKay Car Cardiovascular Scholarship, I welcome to the podium the representative from McKay Cardiovascular. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Kirby and I represent McKay Cardiovascular and at McKay we really believe that our surgical products and devices you know, define the gold standard for our customers and the medical industry. We also believe that education is key to achieving that standard. To be a recipient of our award you have to meet the following criteria. One is attend a four-year college or university. The second is major in a healthcare field. Third is have a 3.0 GPA or higher and have be actively uh, involved with community service and related to health care. Our recipient will receive a $1,000 scholarship in the mail, and our recipient is Shin Han. Our next scholarship is the Marilyn Mezzi Memorial Scholarship presented by Marilyn's husband, uh, Mr. Ernest Mezzi. She came to the Wayne School System in 1970 as a Spanish teacher via Lock Haven State College 
which included a year at the University of Valencia in Spain. George Washington, Wayne Valley, Schuyler Colfax were stops along the way until her arrival here at Wayne Hills High School in 1986. When she traveled to Spanish-speaking countries, she was an ambassador on a par with any ambassador at any embassy in any country. That was her warm and engaging personality. Mrs. Mezzi Marilyn taught a generation of friends and family how to live with cancer. First diagnosed early in our marriage at the age of 27, many of our closest friends never knew of her health issues until the latter years of her life. In fact, you had to be a trusted friend, perhaps a fellow teacher, going through the same thing. Then and only then would she privately approach that person and confide as to how she was able to deal with it for so many years. We were blessed with two children, Michael in 1981, class of 2000 here at Wayne Hills, and Lauren born in 1984, class of 2003 here at Wayne Hills. Marilyn became ill in the early months of 2003, Lauren's senior year. Sadly, she passed away on June the 14th of 2003, a week or so before graduation. Listen to what Evelyn Lacarica, I'm sure everybody knows the Lacarica family here. This is what she said to me a few short years ago. When I first met your wife and spoke to her in Spanish, I thought she had been born in a Hispanic country and was a native speaker. That, ladies and gentlemen, is quite a compliment to a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant who came out of southeastern Pennsylvania to study, learn, and teach the Spanish language and its culture. My other little story took place in this very auditorium about three quarters of the way up this aisle uh, at a uh, ceremony similar to this in uh, the late spring of 2003. Marilyn was gravely ill, and we were here to, uh, to see our Lauren recognized and honored, uh, along with a no number of other students. Midway through the program, it became intermission when head coach uh, Chris Olson a man known more for his stern demeanor and hard-nosed approach on the gridiron, saw Marilyn and approached her. He gave her a hug. They exchanged pleasantries. Marilyn vowed to continue her battle with cancer. And when Coach Olson embraced Marilyn, for me, all of Wayne Hills embraced Marilyn. Expend, extending their love and affection. From Ascalise to Zito, from Bradley to Zambrano, Doherty to Zellner, with ten, tons of names in between, like Markerwick, Ruffini, Shale, Mandon, Curtin, Monjardo, Rennes, and yet even more names, too numerous to remember. Wayne Hills High School is a place that is spe special for me. And with that in mind, I present this year's Marilyn Mezzi Scholarship Award. Our recipient studied Spanish all four years here at Wayne Hills. She's a member of the Spanish Club and the Spanish Honor Society. She's heading in the fall to Penn State University. The 2009 Marilyn Mezzi Memorial Scholarship Award goes to Melissa Roma. Here to present the Pines Lake Women's Club Achievement Awards is Mrs. Joan Riley.
My congratulations to all the students are, who are being honored tonight. It's a wonderful evening and enjoy the moment. The spotlight is on you tonight, but there are some special people standing in the wings who helped you along the way. Your parents, teachers, coaches, you fill in the names. Reflect on them, how they influenced and encouraged you. I'm here tonight to represent all the members of the Pines Lake Women's Club. For over 50 years, our club has been serving the Wayne community, making a difference one project at a time, as a time, at a time. We invite all the women of Wayne to join us. We meet during the school year one uh, for 10 months in the Pines Lake School. But tonight is my privilege to make a difference in the lives of two young women. My congratulations go to both of you. The winners of our award are, the winners are Erin Christie and Brittany Johnson. To present the Jerome A. Pinsky Scholarship is Mrs. Emily Klosik. <laughs> Too bright up here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, illustrious students. I know that I probably know some of you. But anyhow, my name is Emily Klosek and I represent the Wayne Rotary Club here in Wayne. Rotary is a worldwide organization of business and professional leaders that provides humanitarian service, encourages high ethical standards in all locations, and helps build goodwill and peace in the world. Tonight I'm here to present the Jerome A. Pinsky Scholarship. Jerome Pinsky was a public accountant who lived in Pompton Lakes. He was president of the Wayne Rotary Club when he passed away, and now, in his memory, we are awarding this scholarship for $1,000 to Elena Helju. Congratulations. This year's recipient of the St. Cobain Performance Plastic Scholarship will be attending Duke University in the fall, majoring in biological anthropology. I am pleased to award this scholarship to Amanda Euclasia. <laughs> to present the Wayne Council PTO Browse and Shop Scholarships, I introduce Mrs. Karen Hershaft, Browse and Shop Director. Karen Hershaft couldn't be with us this evening, so I'd like to present the awards to these very deserving students. My name is Joyce Duncan. I'm the president of the Wayne Council of PTOs, and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about what our organization does. Our PTO organization is able to give out these awards tonight due to the efforts of our hardworking members townwide. These funds are raised primarily from our PTO browsing shop our children's cultural workshop, and from our local PTO chapters. And I am proud to say that this year, we, we are able to give out over $25,000 in scholarships between the two high schools. And I'd also, thank you. So I'd also like to thank all of you as well for your support of our PTO organization. The first Browse and Shop Award this evening is an academic one, 
and it goes to Robert Bearclough. Our next Browse and Shop Award is also an academic one. This one goes to Miranda Van Dunk. The next ap academic award is for Sarah Zinneman. And our last academic award is for Alyssa Fitzpatrick. It's so much fun giving out money. <laughs> our next PTO award is a commemorative scholarship. And this one goes to Lori McNamara. So many good looking people and <laughs> smart too. <laughs> Couldn't help it, sorry. <laughs> Our next commemorative scholarship is for Alex Rolnick. <laughs> now I'd like to present a PTO leadership scholarship to Jennifer Kozlowski. We also have another leadership scholarship for Nicholas Rowick. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Assistant Treasurer of PTO Council, Joyce Morandi. Good evening, I'm Joyce Morandi, and it's a pleasure to be here this evening to present these awards, and I would like to apologize in advance for mangling the names of these fine students. Um, for community service, we have an award for Matthew Nitto. Also for community service, we have Jordan Lissio. For educational achievement, we have Derek Vortiki. And also for educational achievement, we have Christina De La Osa. And I'd like to introduce the treasurer of the Wayne Council of PTOs, Kathy Kazan. The next group of scholarships are made possible by the Children's Cultural Workshop. And on behalf of the director, Tori Trentacost, I am happy to present. The first one is for performing arts, and it goes to Patrick Hopkins. The next is for visual arts, and the recipient is Danielle Lipinski. The next, 
The next award is for science and technology, and the recipient is Douglas Costa. <laughs> and again, science and technology for Jeffrey Gasnick. The next is for education, and the recipient is Tiffany Englishman. <laughs> and finally for education, Melissa McNulty. Congratulations to everyone. Here to present the Wayne Hills PTO scholarships is Mrs. Renee Dent, Wayne Hills PTO president. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the PTO, we would like to extend our best wishes to you and your families for continued outstanding accomplishments in your academic work. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the PTO's selection of outstanding students. Ariane Backelman. Kristen Hagen. <laughs> Seth Gilbert. <laughs> Hillary Greeby. Corey. Stevie Kyle. <laughs> Elena Portnoy. Matthew Shoebridge. <laughs> Demi Stalupi. <laughs> and Matthew Weinstein. Here to present the Wayne Lions Club scholarships in memory of Edward A. Otto, Veronica M. Otto, and Basil Ritchie is Mr. Al Ruffini. Greetings, everyone. Did you ever believe you'd be freshmen again? That's the new incoming freshman. Uh, it is with great pleasure that I present, I'm, I'm gonna present today five scholarships uh, totaling $10,500, three right now, and two part two. And uh, the, the first three scholarships are courtesy of the Lions Club, of course. And uh, you see us around, we're Wayne Day, we do golf tournaments, we like to raise money. Not only do we support the visually handicapped and the foundation for the handicapped, Camp Marcella, um, we also give a scholarship to every high school in Wayne. And so we're dedicated to doing that. And we have generous donors. 
the Otto is uh, scholarships are by Ken Otto, remembering both his brother and his wife. His children also attended Wayne Hills. The first Edward A. Otto Memorial Scholarship goes to Vienna Fagel. And that's $2,500. The $5,000 scholarship goes to Jen, Jen Van Pelt. I know Jen. And the Lions Club, Basil Rickey, who was a wonderful member, served on the board of Chilton's, raised a lot of money for the Wayne Lions and for the handicapped of this community and all communities. Uh, this $1,000 scholarship goes to Like Lai. The Wayne PB The Wayne PBA Memorial Scholarship is presented by Detective Christian Wittick. Good evening. On behalf of Wayne PBA Local 136, it's my privilege to present two scholarships to two outstanding students who received the scholarships based on community service and academic excellence. The recipient of the first scholarship goes to Laura Garone. And the second scholarship goes to Ho Jin Choi. Okay. We'll get that to him tomorrow. Thank you. To present the Wayne School Retirees Scholarship is Mrs. Judith Modes, president of the Wayne School Retirees. It's an honor to be here tonight to uh, acknowledge the uh, Erica Anderson for her uh, outstanding scholarship. Our last scholarship in the community scholarship portion of this evening's program is the WMBC TV Broadcasting Scholarship. This year's recipient will be attending William Patterson University majoring in journalism and public relations. I'm pleased to present this scholarship to Stephen Parsons. How about one more round of applause for these outstanding accomplishments? The next part of the program I would like to uh, recognize uh, our students for their successes. The first one are our national merit finalists. These individuals scored in the top 1% of 1.5 million that would be million 
juniors taking the 2007 PSAT tests. Our first recipient is Shin Han. <laughs> Niha Jarawala. Jin Kim. <laughs> like Lee. <laughs> and Amanda Euclasia. recipients are National Merit Commended Students, and that puts them in the top 5% of that 1.5 million we spoke about before. Erica Anderson. Christine Campbell. Joyce Cho. Erin Christie. Michael Chavarella. Douglas Costa. Viana Fagel. Molly Flacavento. <laughs> Jody Joseph. <laughs> Nicholas Roick. Rustum. <laughs> Miranda Van Dunk. <laughs> Young Min Yoon. Sarah Zinneman. I would also like to announce a young lady who unfortunately uh, is not able to be here with us tonight, and that's Sarah Saba. I next would like to um, give the National Merit Scholarship sponsored by GAF Materials Corporation to Like Lee. <clears throat> National Merit Scholarship sponsored by State Farm Companies Foundation to Amanda Eucalasia. National Merit Scholarship sponsored by Automatic Data Processing Incorporated, Matthew E. Borowski.
and a National Merit Scholarship sponsored by Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, to Shin Han. At this time, I'd like to turn over our program to our Supervisor of Guidance, Mrs. Moore. We will be presenting the Edward J. Blaustein Distinguished Scholars. Dr. Edward J. Blaustein, for whom this Distinguished Scholar Award is, is named, was the 17th President of Rutgers. Doug, I thought you were in charge of all the uh, electronics around here. Only for NHS. Oh, sorry. That's only NHS, and we'll have to work on that. How's that? Better? He was deeply committed to the central role of undergraduate education within a research university. The university's responsibility to encourage participation in public service and to the value of merit-based scholarships to recognize, support, and promote academic excellence. To become a Blaustein Scholar, a student ranks in the top 10% of the class with a combined verbal and math score of 1,260 or better. Our first Edward Blaustein Distinguished Scholar tonight is Erica Anderson. Yeah. Our next, Millen Burrow. Christine Campbell. Grace Cha. Joyce Cho. Christy. Daniel Cohen. Douglas Costa. Raj Dave. Alyssa Fitzpatrick. Molly Flacavento. <laughs> Elena Helju. Neha Jarawala. Jody Joseph. Jin Kim. Likely. Jordan Lissio. Prathusha Maduri. Victoria Igna. Elena Portnoy. Mustafa Qutishat. Nicholas Rowick. <laughs> Leal Rustam. <laughs> Ka 
Kara Selix. Paul Seltzer. Nicholas Tirana. Amanda Euclasia. Miranda Van Dunk. Sarah Zinneman. At this time, I'd like to announce that we are uh, starting a, uh, a new award this year in memory of a former graduate of Wayne Hills High School. Uh, it is the Leonard P. Zakem Memorial Civil Rights Award, and in order to try to um, put into words what Lenny has accomplished with his life, we tried to put together a little snippet of uh, a documentary on, on his life. Lenny Zakem of Wayne, New Jersey. From an early age, Lenny learned what it is to be different and he started honing the skills he would need for years to come. As the force behind Boston's black Jewish and Irish Jewish satyrs, as a champion of the A World of Difference Institute, a media and education campaign for racial understanding that now reaches children in 29 cities and 14 countries, or as co-founder of Team Harmony. Together we can make a world of difference. A yearly event that brings together tens of thousands of students to confront racism and hate New England's Lenny Zakem led a revolution of respect heard around the world. You know, I knew him a little bit during the last year of his life. He's one of those people whose intensity, inner spirit you could feel even when he was very ill. I learned through Lenny Zakem works at that in so many different ways. Uh, Lenny put together the largest ever black Jewish satyr in Boston. I think some 600 people came to it. Uh, he also uh, fought hard to uh, improve relations among other communities in the city of Boston. Uh, I am proud that I've spent a lifetime standing with the Lenny Zakums and Dick Lovskys. We have the power by the force of our conviction to change things. It doesn't take a mass movement uh, to create a revolution. It's a revolution of thought, a revolution of spirit. It takes one person taking it seriously and to another person, to another person. That's the heart of political organizing. It's the heart of coalition building. And what it takes is a willingness to be respectful of each other, even if you don't agree, to, be, to celebrate the things that make us different, to not let those differences serve as an obstacle to, to constructive work together. Uh, it, it's a responsibility. It, and sometimes it's a chore. But when it works, it's a work of art. Lenny Zakem of Wayne, New Jersey. From an early age, Lenny... Um, what, what will occur is the recipient of this next award uh, will be uh, placed on, on the plaque. The name is already here. I'm not giving it out because I don't want to take away the thunder. Um, but this will be uh, displayed in our media center and will be uh, given annually. And what it reads is, is that the Leonard P. Zakem Memorial Civil Rights Award presented annually to the senior who best exemplifies Lenny's advocacy of civil rights, promoting civil harmony, embracing cultural diversity, and championing the fight against bigotry and racism. At this time, it is my uh, distinct pleasure and honor to call up to the podium uh, Mr. Gerald Zakem, Lenny's father, to present this award. I apologize, Mr. and Mrs. Gerald Zakem. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much. Well, a lot of my thunder was taken away, but it was a pleasure and wonderful hearing from it. And our thanks to the board and the school officials who brought this. Uh, Lenny was 10 years old when John Kennedy was murdered. 
It affected his life, his goals, his priorities, and the career he chose. Kennedy was a man of action, and so was Lenny. One thing that Lenny would be very proud of tonight is the diversity currently in the township of Wayne and in the Wayne school system. This he would have flipped about. It did not exist in 1971, the years he graduated. And of course, we're so pleased to welcome with us several of his classmates of the class of 71, of which he was a president. Recognizing the need to overcome, to overcome bigotry, he reached out to all races and religions. He believed that people of all religions and races interacting with each other and learning about each other's religions and cultures would re realize how alike they were and how similar were their roots. He created a program that is used internationally, in fact, as well as in the town of Wayne, called a Wayne of Difference, a, w a World of Difference, Difference, which is preventative anti-bigotry. The, the Wayne School System didn't know that this was created by a, Wayne, a, a graduate of the Wayne School System and is now practiced in over 40 countries and 2,000 cities. He reached out all over, every race, every creed, and every ethnicity. And in 1987 and again in 2000, the American Bar Association selected Kenny Lenny as one of the outstanding 20 young lawyers in the United States for his civil rights activities. In 1995, he was diagnosed with an incurable cancer, multiple myeloma. He created, and he knew his time was short, and he created some programs that really go out throughout the world. And one, uh, what the, the one thing, I'm sorry for breaking up, the, the Lenny Zakem Fund was born in 1997, and each year donates over 400,000 in grants, almost $5 million so far, to food banks working with volunteers from schools, religious groups and businesses to distribute food and provide other services to the community, a group which focuses on eliminating domestic violence in immigrant communities, after school programs for at-risk inner high school students, teaching incarcerated mothers to integrate into the community, and providing medical care, education, and housing assistance for homeless families. In 1999, Pope Paul II at the Vatican personally united Lenny with the Order of St. Gregory, the highest lay honor the Catholic Church places on non-Catholics for his interfaith, intercultural, civil rights activities. Lenny, as a cancer student, as a cancer patient, also turned his energies to helping others with cancer. He challenged, convinced the doctors on the medical board at Dana-Farber Cancer Center in Boston that complementary therapies, such as acupuncture, massage, reiki, music, and other accepted practices in conjunction with conventional medicine were vital. The Leonard P. Zakem Center for Integrated Therapies at Dana-Farber was opened in 2000. Today, there are more than 27 similar major cancer centers across the country that follow the Lenny Zakem program. When he died in 1946, the state of Massachusetts in the city of Boston memorialize him in the beautiful Boston Zakem Bridge, which crosses the, child, the, the, the Charles and which says, which it, what was a reward for his bridging communities and bringing people together. We celebrate Lenny's life's accomplishments and civil legacies. Lenny sat as you do in these same chairs and classrooms as you, took similar courses and played on the same athletic fields. Learning, learning of Lenny's deeds will encourage you, I hope, to understand and believe that you too can make a difference. So it is with pride, privilege, and honor we present the Wayne Hills High School Class of 2009 Leonard P. Zakem Civil Rights Award to Jody Joseph. For, outsta for outstanding activities and human decency and civil rights, along with a copy of his book, Lift Up Your Voice. You, I'm sure you earned it.
thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Akum, for uh, sharing your evening with us tonight. Uh, at this point, point, we'd like to move on with some academic recognition awards. I would like to uh, bring up Ms. Joyce Duncan, PTO Council President, to award our Wayne Hills Valedictorian Award. Let's go. Good evening again. On behalf of the Wayne Council of PTOs, it is my pleasure and honor to present our valedictorian and salutatorian plaques tonight here at Wayne Hills High School. This year, it is again a privilege and an honor to present the valedictorian plaque to an outstanding student, Heejin Kim. I am also honored to have the privilege of presenting the salutatorian plaque to another exceptional student, Neha Jariwala. I'd just like to say one last thing to all of the students. On behalf of the Wayne Council of PTOs, to all of you, we congratulate you on your achievements and awards. May the future bring you continued academic su success, happiness, and the best of your dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duncan. At this time, it is um, my privilege to award the Principal's Leadership Award uh, to an outstanding young man with tremendous leadership qualities, Nicholas Roick. <laughs> the next young lady, um, I think, goes with no surprise after her earlier appointment, uh, the Character Award to Holly Bastinick. Just on a side note, if you didn't read the paper today, uh, Holly also was a Passaic County Scholar Athlete of the Year, Female Athlete of the Year, awarded last year. <laughs> this one, I think, uh, also um, makes a little sense after the award she just won, but our humanitarian award to Jody Joseph. Our next award um, is, I think, very, very special because it shows the uh, spirit and pride that they have in our school. We have two individuals, one male, one female. Our first one for a Patriot Spirit and Pride Award to Viana Fagel. And our male recipient for our Patriot Spirit and Pride Award goes to Michael Waller. <laughs> At this time, I would like to um, call up Mrs. Virginia Chiller with our Social Eyes Club Award winner. Seven years ago, a mother of a child with autism voiced a concern that her son had nothing to do after school, no friends to hang with, no club, sport, or activity that he could participate in, and especially no social life after school. Thus, the Socialized Club was born. Students with special needs from both Wayne Valley and Wayne Hills 
get together to participate in community activities such as adopting citizens from Sunrise Assisted Living, to playing bingo, sending thank you notes to the troops, contributing to the Red Cross, raising funds for the March of Dimes, but most importantly, to have fun. This year, I am very deeply pleased to give two of my favorite students the You Make a Difference Award to William Cran and Monique Jibalisco. Thank you, Ms. Chiller. Um, whenever we have a tough day in the office, we always go down to see Monique and Billy, and they always seem to bring a smile to our faces. So I'm very, very happy for them to, to receive those awards. This time I'd like to bring up uh, Ms. Emily Klosik with the Interact Rotary Scholarship. It is so nice to see you. It's so nice so good to see you again. We went to school together. That's right. Right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Well, good evening again. And uh, I'm going to keep it very short. On behalf of the Wayne Rotary Club, I'm here to present the Wayne Rotary Interact Club Scholarship to a very deserving student who has dedicated so much of her time to others in so many ways. I read all about you. Uh, her name is Sarah Zinneman. Congratulations. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to call up Mr. Brad Smith, Department Supervisor of Physical Education and Fine Arts. Mr. Smith. Good evening. First, I have the honor of presenting the Physical, Physical Education Awards. The Wayne Hills High School Phys Physical Education Award recognizes outstanding achievement by a male and female student in physical education who have made a commitment to a healthy, active lifestyle and who can serve as a role model for other students. This award recognizes students who are committed to improving their personal health and the health of the school and community. In addition, both of these students have completed four years of health and physical education at Wayne Hills while earning straight A's each and every marking period. This year, I'm proud to announce the winner of the Male Physical Education Award is Nicholas Roick. And the winner of the Female Physical Education Award is Ariane Bagelman. Next, I have the honor of presenting the Physical Education Special Service Award. This award is presented to a student or students who have been an integral aspect of our adapted physical education program. Our adapted physical education class is a program which adapts and modifies traditional physical education classes to address the individualized needs of students with a wide range of abilities. The two students who will receive the award tonight have been a part of our program for two years. They have both served as positive role models while epitomizing personal health and fitness, sharing in the enjoyment of physical, as, physical activity and displaying sensitivity to the physical and emotional needs of every student in our program. I am pleased to announce this year's recipients as Jessica Semeraro and Ashley Opahori. And finally, I have the honor of presenting the Senior Art Awards. This year, the Art Department is awarding the Senior Art Awards to Danielle Sanfilippo and Krista Terizzi. <laughs> Both of these students have shown considerable growth and promise since starting at Wayne Hills. 
making the most of what the art department has to offer. Danielle and Krista have taken every art course that our department offers, earning an A in each course. Each is highly dedicated and qualified to receive this award. Both of these students will be continuing with their art education in college. Danielle will be majoring in animation at William Patterson University, and Krista will be attending the University of Vermont to study art education. Thank you, Mr. Smith. This time I would like to bring up uh, Ms. Judith Faley, Department Supervisor, Applied Technology. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. You know, <laughs> you know Ms. Weir said I was going to be the comic relief for the evening. I guess that's going to be true. I have, a, that's, I have a big mouth, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have a, a large box of goodies. Unfortunately, folks couldn't be here tonight, so I've been entrusted with everything, so you're going to have to uh, bear with me. Thank you very much. Um, I am the supervisor of the Applied Technology Department. Applied Technology consists of business education, cooperative industrial education, family and consumer science, and technology education. So I have quite a few awards here uh, for the entire department. Um, this evening, uh, what we did in the business ed department and the tech ed department, we kind of narrowed it down to a few people in family and consumer science. We've kind of split it up into certain areas. So that's why I have a big box full of goodies. In business education, we are proud to uh, present the award for outstanding student this year, senior student to Michael Waller. And in addition, all students who receive awards this evening from the technology department are getting the ANSI standard approved Z87 safety glasses. <laughs> and I, I would be very upset if all of you did not put them on this evening. Okay? The Cooperative Education Award Okay, there's, there's two things together. Here. 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 No, I have this book. I don't have the other book. Oh, that book. Oh, the big book. Okay. Uh, the Cooperative Education Award this evening goes to Michael Finan, but he is absent this evening, so we'll make sure the award gets to him directly. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the Family and Consumer Science Awards, as I said to you, Family and Consumer Science uh, consists of child development, our foods program, our fashion design clothing program, and uh, we present, we're presenting a lot of things this evening. So for child development, we have two awards. This evening we have an award going to Jackie Giordano and Tiffany Englishman. Lose your safety glasses. I don't know if they'll fit over your regular glasses, but you can try. Congratulations. Uh, our foods award this year uh, goes to Danielle Bavona. These are good if you drop things, but they're not good for grease spatter, so just be careful, okay? <laughs> Our clothing awards this year, fashion clothing design, Melissa McNulty and Lexa Esmat. Okay. And Lexa is not here this evening. Again, we'll make sure that she gets her safety glasses. Congratulations. We have a special recognition award this year, um, Annie Choi uh, entered a contest through Seventeen magazine, so we wanted to recognize her. I know she, 
believe she received a scholarship for that. And um, we just want to recognize her this evening, so we have a special award here for her tonight. Annie Choi. <laughs> Our scholarship winners this year for family and consumer science, we had a little problem, kids, so when you open up the envelope, there's an IOU inside because nobody remembered to requisition a check for this evening, so I'm afraid you'll have to get back to me on that one. Uh, <laughs> Karen and Chris Deselix. I also have the honor of being the supervisor for the Future Teacher Academy, and what we try and do with the Future Teacher students is to give them an opportunity to see what uh, their chosen profession is going to be like. We have a lot of discussion. We try and get them out into classrooms uh, to see students through the Future Teacher Clubs this year, and next year we have uh, a third year child development class called Child Development 3 Project Teach, in it's going to run ninth period, and we're going to have students that actually are going to go out and do some uh, work with our teachers in the district. And this year, we would like to present the award for the Future Teachers Academy to Ashley, I had it, and I, now I lost it, Griglovich. Thank you very much. I, Our technology awards, the Marion Pitt Award for Technology Education, we split the category up. Um, our automotive students, we have a, a, a four-year automotive program in Wayne, and it combines the students from, or it allows the students from both Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley to get a very thorough education in automotive. Uh, careers, and um, we picked three students for our auto award this year. Uh, Sean Sly. Yeah. Mike Proctor. And Nick Cornwell. And the last one for my round right now. Better put these on. <laughs> uh, the Yearbook Award. Mr. Ryerson could not be here this evening, so he asked me to um, present the award. The Yearbook Award. Oh, did I forget Greg? No, I didn't forget Greg. No, okay, I'm sorry. Before the Yearbook Award, uh, we have two all-around applied tech students in the area of technology. They've taken a variety of different classes from CAD to woods to robotics to auto. And they've got so many electives in their schedules. I'm hoping that one of them comes back to take my job because I only got a few years left here, kids. So uh, I'm not dying or anything. No, no, I'm, I'm retiring, maybe. Um, so the two all-around technology awards go to Greg Miller and Mark Richardson. And the yearbook award this year, the yearbook, if you haven't already seen it, good job, kids. Great job. Really looks good again this year. And the award for yearbook this year goes to Mark Richardson. Thank you. Um, I would like to introduce Mr. Jim Hoekstrade, who's going to present the TV Production Award. <clears throat> Bert Blylevin won 287 games in the major leagues. He is not in the Hall of Fame. 
Tommy John won 288 games in the major leagues. He is not in the Hall of Fame. That doesn't mean they were not great players, they just fell short. This year I had a very difficult decision to make. Many of my seniors this year did a great job, but just fell short when it comes to giving out the TV award. One, however, did not. His work in the club during the year was second to none, from following Coach Olson during senior night, while Coach Olson wore a wireless mic for us, to taping on the field for Giant Stadium, he did a great job. His work in the classroom was stellar as well. He was always willing to go the extra mile and work on projects that weren't always the most glamorous. I compare him to Kurt Schilling, someone who I believe should be a future Hall of Famer, although I know, Sean, you probably don't agree with me. He's going off to Drew in the fall. This year's winner of the TV Production Award is Sean DePerry. Next, we will present the English Department Awards. Mrs. Angela Mancinelli has been ill the past few days and she's unable to be with us this evening. The Fred P. Sharkey Award for English is awarded to Amanda Euclasia. The English Competition Award Word Master Challenge and Medal is awarded to Erica Anderson. An additional English Competition Award Word Master Challenge is awarded to Like Lee. Our Lantern Literary Magazine Award is awarded to Danielle Sanfilippo. Thank you. We will now have the, the ESL Award. Mr. Joe Riley, ESL teacher. Good, e good evening, everybody. Uh, as Mrs. Marr said, my name is Joseph Riley. I teach English as a second language here at the Hills. And first, let me add my congratulations to all the students here, as well as the parents. Uh, the fact that you're all here tonight is clear, clear, means that you're clearly doing something, which means everything, very right. So congratulations to all, all the recipients. This year's ESL award goes to a young man who came to this country from China a mere two years ago with very, very little English ability. He had a very difficult time adjusting to life, school, and language here. Nonetheless, very soon after he arrived, he began to surprise me and his other teachers with his work habits, rapid progress, and very positive attitude. Last year as a junior, he made great, great strides. In October of this school year, he passed all sections of the HSPA, a requirement for graduation. And then he scored well enough on the SATs to be accepted to several colleges in the U.S., including the one that he has decided to attend, Stony Brook University in New York, no small feat. His progress has been, and I'm sure will continue to be dramatic, and I know this young man's future is bright. I'm very proud tonight to present the ESL Award to Shang Zheng. It was much easier for Miss Faley and Mr. Hoopstray to have a key to the back door, and they surprised me before. We had a little gel log jam up here. Uh, I'd like to announce um, Mrs. Auerbach, our supervisor for mathematics. Congratulations to all of you. Today I'll be presenting three awards for the mathematics department. The first one is just the mathematics award. And I say just, but this is, goes to two students who have been exemplary throughout all four years in all of their math courses here at Wayne Hills. 
I had the pleasure of teaching these two students, and when I graded tests, I sometimes questioned why I even put together an answer key, because I could have used their tests and it would have accomplished the same thing. So tonight I'd like to present these awards to Nick Rowick and Heejin Kim. next award is the Computer Science Award. And Computer Science, again, this is a student that I, am, I know very well. And this individual took every Computer Science course that we offer here at Wayne Hills. In addition, last year at the NJIT uh, high school competition, he and two of his classmates earned honorable mention, which was a tremendous feat. This individual will be studying Computer Science and worked as a programmer this previous summer. And we certainly wish him the most success. Doug Costa. <laughs> and finally, the Mathematics Competition Award. Every month we have the New Jersey Math League Competition, and at the end of the senior year, 18 students qualified to take the American Math Competition. This student was obsessed with scoring all answers correct on the New Jersey Math League. Just like I like to do my nightly Sudokus, and many of you like to do the New York Times crossword puzzle, as difficult as it may be, we're determined to get the answer. This individual scored phenomenally well on the New Jersey Math League questions from freshman through senior year, but even more impressively, earned a bronze medal for his performance on the American Math Competition, which qualified him to compete in the American Invitational Mathematics Exam. So Shin Han, please come up and accept this award. Thank you, Mrs. Auerbach. At this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Mrs. Cara Palumba to uh, award the Coral Award. This year's Coral Award is presented to a truly unique student who is irreplaceable. To say that she has shown extreme dedication and a love of singing does not even express all she has brought to the Wayne Hills Choral Program. This young lady has been a choir member for seven years, including her time in the Schuyler Colfax Choirs, and also took chorus and chamber choir together in her sophomore year, giving her an hour and a half of singing and rehearsing each day. This student has been an asset to our chamber choir soprano section, but has easily covered vocal parts in other sections as well, just because she likes to learn those too. During her time in choir, I've seen her develop into a confident leader, acting as a role model to her fellow choristers, and always offering comments to help them improve their musical skills. Her perfect sense of pitch is admirable to all. In fact, we didn't even need a pitch pipe for a cappella pieces during her time here, because she was our starting pitch. This student has extreme musical ability, not just knowing about music, but in performing music as well. It has given me great joy to observe her improvement over the past five years and to see her enthusiasm to study music grow more each day. She has had commendable performances in our spring musicals, having a lead role the past two years, and she has attended just about every chamber choir event in and outside of school for the past three years, and there have been many. Needless to say, this student's absence can definitely be felt by all. Next year's choir will just not be the same without her. It is bittersweet for me to say goodbye to this young lady, but I sincerely wish her all the best as she studies music education next year, something of which I couldn't be more proud. Congratulations to this year's Choral, Choral Award recipient, our Chamber Choir President, Emily Amatuli. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Paterno for the Instrumental Award. Not tonight. <laughs> Mr. Paterno apologizes for not being able to be here, but he asked me to be in his place, and I'm very proud to do that. Uh, the first award <clears throat> is the Instrumental Music Achievement Award. 
It gives me great pleasure tonight to recognize a wonderfully talented young man <coughs> whose achievements in instrumental music have not only brought honor to him, but to our band and school as well. He has earned positions in concert bands at the area band level, and he has performed with the American Music Abroad European Tour. His talent and work ethic have propelled him to success at Wayne Hills, and I'm sure that success will continue throughout his life. I am proud to present this year's Instrumental Music Achievement Award to Emerson Lee. Each year, our band booster organization is proud to recognize one student for his or her tireless effort and dedication. This year's recipient is being recognized for the positive effect she has had on so many other band members, her leadership, and her musical achievements. Her enthusiasm and upbeat manner made people want to work with and for her. She led by example and dropped back to pick up anyone who had fallen behind. She was always willing to stand up for what she believed in and to work for what she wanted. On behalf of our Band Booster organization, I am proud to present their 2009 Senior Scholarship to Holly Besting. There is a young woman here tonight who exemplifies the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. She also exemplifies their idea of leadership, including dependability, bearing, courage, decisiveness, endurance, enthusiasm, initiative, integrity, judgment, knowledge, tact, usefulness, I mean unselfishness, and loyalty. She has consistently carried herself with class and acted as a most outstanding example of everything our organization stands for. She has meant a great deal to our organization, and I am proud to present this year's Semper Fidelis Award to Jenna Curtin. John Philip Sousa is a name that brings to mind great concerts and famous bands the world over. His efforts to promote concert bands and their music made possible the ensembles in which our students perform today. The John Philip Sousa Award is given nationally to the band member who has done the most for his or her school band program during his or her high school career. In our school, the wonderful thing about this award it is that it is voted by, on by the 177 students in the band program. They are charged with choosing the student that they feel has done the most for our band program in the last four years. On behalf of the students in our band, I take great pride in presenting the 2009 John Philip Sousa Award to Vianna. As you can tell, I get very emotional with my children. <laughs> now I would like to introduce Ms. Chantel Sastre, daughter of one of our former colleagues. She has come from Tennessee to present her dad's award. This next award is an award I am proud to give, but saddened that I have to. On July 15, 2007, your friend and my father passed away. He was, my, he was many things to many people, but above all, a caring and compassionate man. The J. Chuck Sastre Memorial Scholarship has been established to keep his memory alive and to honor a graduating student who is a great deal like him. The J. Chuck Sastre Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Josh Rosen.
this time, I'd like to bring up Miss Barbara Castagna, our theater arts advisor. Please allow me to note uh, for just a moment that in the beginning of this presentation, Mr. Markowick mentioned that our school productions look like college productions. Yes, they do. And thank you to him from the bottom of our hearts for all of the kids participating in the Wayne Hills Theater Arts Program for noticing the hard work and dedication. Um, the, uh, this year's production, The Secret Garden, was completely built on the backs of these students. We could not have pulled it off without them. I could have done all the directing I wanted to do and wouldn't have gotten anywhere had they not given it their all. Um, their hard work, their dedication, and all the blood, sweat, and tears that went with it was completely the reason the show was such a tremendous success. Um, that may sound dramatic to you, but it's completely true. But please do not be alarmed. Your children were the ones sweating. More often than not, it was me crying and bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> um, the award, I'm, I'm two, presenting two awards tonight, actually. The first one is the Margaret Ehrman Award for the Fine and Performing Arts. This award is in memory of Maggie Ehrman, who was the first commander-in-chief of the theater arts program here when the school opened so many years ago. This award is going to a student who has been with the program since her freshman year. She has shown tremendous amounts of dedication and has done everything and anything asked of her, above and beyond anything anyone could ever do. Um, oddly enough, she has never had a leading role, and that has not bothered her. Every role she's been given, she has taken to new heights, and she's to be commended for her outstanding theatrical talent. The Margaret Urban Award for Fine and Performing Arts goes to Vianna Fagel. <laughs> the second award that I have the honor of giving tonight is for theater arts technology. Um, as many of you may or may not know, what you see on the stage is only a fraction of what goes on. These kids perform for a couple hours, three nights in a week, and what you don't see backstage is the miracle of theatrical technology. We have armies of kids running lights and sound and moving things around dressed in black and giving their all to make the show a success without getting recognition. Um, the student who is receiving this award was in fact on the stage and he did a fantastic job. However, it was his contribution to the building of the set, which I think he did almost single-handedly, um, that is incredible. We, he built anything we threw at him and I had no idea that he had this talent. As a matter of fact, he kind of came out of nowhere at the audition, so I'm doubly impressed. Um, the Theatrical Arts Technology Award goes to Greg Carrick. and gavel, Mrs. Del Moro, thank you. Good evening. Tonight's mask and gavel award goes to Benjamin Rappaport. The mask and gavel team delivers morning announcements daily and does so often from scribbled notes prepared hastily by busy coaches and teachers. Anyone who can decipher those notes and pronounce names like Palzuski, Ventimiglia, and Chattervetti flawlessly <laughs> deserves recognition. Congratulations, Ben. I don't know, Mrs. Del Moro. I think Palzuski is very easy to say. Here's our straight man, Dr. Anthony Defina, science. I just need to share this. Uh, Dr. Defina and I had a conversation this afternoon about tonight, and he goes, I always try to be funny, and nobody ever laughs. I said, don't worry, Doc, you'll get them. 
Drop the microphone. Okay. Uh, all I was going to say was, Palzuski, you can say, but nobody can spell it. But, uh, anyway, um, I'm very happy to be here tonight to present the, uh, the Science Award on behalf of my department. And uh, at the beginning of this uh, school year, I actually looked uh, at the senior class ranking, and I remember saying to myself, which is not unusual. I usually do walk through the halls talking to myself. But I remember saying to myself, wow, the Science Award this year is really going to be a difficult decision. Because when I looked at that list of names, just looking at the top 10 ranked seniors in this class, it read like a cast of characters of a movie entitled Future Science Stars of America. And when it came time to select a recipient later in the year, we applied our department criteria. And just as I had expected, a group of those science stars emerged. And those stars literally glittered and glowed a little bit brighter than some of the others. So we went back to our criteria and kind of raised the bar on academics and involvement and accomplishments to see if perhaps one of those bright stars might outshine the other stars. And actually we found that there wasn't one individual to outshine the others, but as a group they actually complemented each other and reinforced each other so that I would describe them as a dynamic starburst of science excellence. So I am very, very happy to present the award tonight to four individuals who, um, and I can't resist this, I'm sorry, they're, they're known to me as Kim One, Cinnamon Bun, Maharaj, and Jabaruzi. <laughs> to you, they would be Haitian Kim, Sarah Zinnemann, Neha Jarawala, and Raj Dave. You have to get up now. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Dafina. Great job. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Benjamin Grieco, World Studies Department Supervisor. Tough act to follow. Yeah. I've always said we have to change the order. Dr. Dafina is always the toughest act to follow, so I won't touch the microphone either. Uh, it's my pleasure tonight uh, to say congratulations to all the students that are up here and. Uh, to present the awards for those that have excel excelled in uh, world languages. So without further ado, we'll start with French. Uh, the World Language Award in French goes to Lauren Wagner. We also have a, uh, another award in French, and it also, it's a, like a co-award. It goes to Emily Amatula. We'll move on to Latin, and the winner and the World Language Award is Joyce Cho. We have three students who have excelled in Italian. First student is Danielle Madrafina. Our second recipient, Daniela Bovina. Bovona, my fault. Yeah. 
Our third recipient in Italian is Tiffany Englishman. We have several recipients in the Spanish language. Our first recipient is Neha Jarawala. Our second recipient is Karina Fernandez. And our third recipient is Melissa Roma. Our final award for uh, world languages is someone who is uh, multilingual. She, has, uh, she will be receiving the World Language Award for Outstanding Achievement and her name is Elena Helju. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Shale to come up and... ...social studies department tonight. The first is the Social Science Award. We, as a social studies department, get together and we discuss some of the many students who, who have uh, taken a number of the social studies electives. Aside from the... Uh, mandatory courses, we have a lot of electives and we have a number of students here who have taken a lot of our courses. And basically what we look for is a student who has not only done well academically, but someone who has been engaged in the classes, who contributes in class, and really has shown uh, an interest in the various electives that we offer. And for the, for the first award, the Social Science Award, it goes to Caitlin Fraser. The second award that we give out as a department is a political science award. It is um, in conjunction with the League of Women Voters, whose goal is to promote political responsibility through informed and active participation of citizens in, in, in government and to act on selected governmental issues. Political science is one of the courses that I'm fortunate enough to teach. And while we talk about advocacy and being involved, it's always nice to see a student who has taken that and made it a reality. Some of you may have noticed that by reading recent editorials in the Wayne Today. <laughs> and to that student, the award goes to Mr. Paul Seltzer. bring up Mr. Bruce Keogh for our athletic award. Congratulations to each of the recipients this evening and congratulations to the parents. Um, good evening, I am Bruce Keogh. I'm one of the counselors here and one of the varsity coaches as well. Uh, Mr. Askelis, our athletic director, uh, was unable to attend this evening and he also sends his congratulations to all the award winners. The Athletic Award is given by the Wayne Hills coaching staff and administration to the student athletes who have given his or her commitment over four years to the athletic programs at Wayne Hills and earned recognition at the league, the county, and the state levels. And this year's winners are Heather Higgins and Justin Horahan. The New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association Awards are given to the male and female student athletes 
who embody sportsmanship, ideals, and the athletic accomplishments, as well as being in the top 10% of their graduating class, as promoted by this state organization during their four years at Wayne Hills. This year's award winners are Sarah Zinneman and Raj Davi. Thank you, Mr. Keogh. This time I'd like to call up Mrs. Donna DeBlock with the Wayne Hills Patriots Club Award. Okay. And Mrs. Eileen Albanese. Good evening. My name is Donna DeBlock, and this is Eileen Albanese, and we are officers of the Patriots Club. And on behalf of the Patriots Club, we are proud and honored to be here to award scholarships and recognition of athletic achievement to the following seniors. Congratulations to the following scholarship winners. Christian Avedizian. Ariane Bakelman. Michael Carbonelli. Ryan Diderno. Michael Daniel. Eric Delavopi. Travis Delavolpe. <laughs> Erica Dent. <laughs> Alyssa Fitzpatrick. Heather Higgins. <laughs> Justin Horahan. <laughs> David Martinez. Joey Russo. <laughs> Heather Thomas. <laughs> and Chandler Weston. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to call up Mr. Michael Shale, Senior Class Leadership Award. In addition to being a teacher here at Hills, uh, I've also been fortunate enough over the last four years to be the senior class advisor, along with Mrs. Laura Legway, who couldn't be with us this evening. The class advisors here at Hills travel the four years with the students, so we, I've been fortunate enough to know just about all the kids here, 
from their freshman year up to their senior year. This award this evening is, again, the Senior Class Leadership Award. And it's one of those awards that's probably one of the easiest choices made all night. And just about every kid on the stage could probably guess who it's going to. And I'll ask him to stay seated as I go through this quickly. But the recipient this evening is Nick Rowick. <laughs> Nick, Nick's been the class president for all four years for the class of 2009. Together along with Miss Allegri, I've spent an inordinate amount of time with Nick, whether it's in person, after school, before school, via email, whatever the case may be. He's one of those kids who basically seems old beyond his years. He's been amazingly organized, dedicated. He's shown the ability to work with his peers. He has the ability to relate not only with his classmates, but with teachers, with administrators. I've also gotten to know him out for everyone's interest from A to Z throughout the class of 2009. He's one of those kids that Miss Allegri and I always basically kind of said he just gets it. We've had an amazing four years as a class with, under Nick's leadership with the help of all the great students here, from our lightly attended freshman dance <laughs> to, uh, to coming in second during Spirit Week as freshmen, our Valentine's Day activities, our craft shows, our dodgeball tournaments, our junior formal, um, all the way to our wonderful senior prom. And along with the rest of the student council, Nick has really played a pivotal role in all of this. We've raised seemingly record-breaking amounts of money and introduced a lot of great new ideas to Wayne Hills. This, a couple weeks ago, we, we were lucky enough to have our senior prom at the Rockley Country Club, a very, very nice establishment up in North Jersey. And throughout the night, various students approached me, kept saying, wow, Shale, what is this so nice? This is so great. And I kept saying, don't look at me. Thank Roick. Mrs. Allegri and I repeatedly sang and still do sing Nick's praises, whether it's in private or in public, to other teachers, to Mr. Pazuski and Mr. Mark before him, the administrators. And uh, I've been joking, you know, Mrs. Allegri's retiring this year, Nick's graduating, and everyone says, oh, next year you go back to being the freshman advisor. And I say, you know, no, I I'm going to bow out, because quite frankly, with Laura retiring and with Nick graduating, it can't possibly go anywhere but down from here, because that's how good it's been. <laughs> And I say that with, with real sincerity, and I really can't say enough about the job Nick's done. I cannot think of a more deserving winner. Senior Class Leadership Award to Nick Rowick. At this time, I'd like to call up uh, Ms. Judith Faley to do the Student Dance Association Awards. Mrs. McLean could not be here this evening, but she did ask me to present the Student Dance Association Scholarship Awards. Uh, sorry kids, no safety glasses for you. Okay. Uh, what is the value of a good leader? Priceless. That is what I think of these young ladies who worked tirelessly to create, direct, and perform in the SDA 2009 anniversary show, 40 years and still dancing. And congratulations to all of our winners. Um, I don't know what particular order she's put these in, but I made sure that I followed the order. So I, I, I don't know if there's any significance to you folks who are coming up here, but our first award goes to Stephanie Yolis. And I, I'm sorry if I'm messing up names. Okay. Congratulations, you're welcome. Angie Culpin. <laughs> Melissa McNulty. Kristen Selix. <laughs> Jennifer Van Pelt.
Marissa Palumbo. Talia Finkler. Yeah, Talia. <laughs> Alicia Mertrude. <laughs> Melissa Rudner. Jamie Klein. <laughs> Tiffany Englishman. and Kara Silix. Thank you. Next will be the Student Council Leadership Award, Ms. Fernanda Amaral. And Mr. Joseph Tursa. Good evening. To the, uh, this year's Student Council Leadership Award goes to our president, Vianna Fagel. And our Student Council scholarships go to Vianna Fagel, Talia Finkler. Alyssa Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Stephanie Ulios. <laughs> and Matt Weinstein. National Honor Society, I'd like to ask Mr. Keogh back up to the podium. Thank you. The National Honor Society is one of those organizations here at Wayne Hills that at many other high schools, it is simply an honorary society based on scholarship, which at Wayne Hills, as many of you know, is a 3.5 cumulative grade point average. And yet at Wayne Hills, this is one of the most active organizations, one of the largest organizations at Wayne Hills that does an amazing job with various activities in a student's junior and or senior year. Based on the fact that this is not only scholarship, but also leadership, character, and service. Although Mrs. Allegri wasn't able to be here tonight, I understand that the, you, those of you who are members attended a wonderful National Honor Society dinner this year and before all of you, it is my privilege to give the National Honor Society Award this year to Raj Dave. I'd like to bring back up to the podium Mr. Albert Ruffini for the Leo's Club Thomas Murray Memorial Scholarship. Nice to be back again. This time the scholarships were chosen by yours truly. The first Leo Club scholarship uh, given in the name of Thomas Murray. He's a jarhead, 
to all you Marines out there, a gunny sergeant who fought through the Pacific Wars, came home, founded a trucking company, and didn't forget the unfortunate. Gave his time and his money to those in need. And that certainly exemplifies a person who actually, you know, I'm about as disorganized as she is organized, and such a wonderful person that exudes compassion out of every bone in her body. The um, $1,000 scholarship goes to Miranda Van Dunk. Here, so did I give both of them to you? Yeah. She deserves them. No. The second scholarship goes to a very good friend of mine, a member of our ecology club, and this is in honor of a Annapolis graduate, Wayne Hills graduate, class of '75, Naval Academy graduate, class of '79 died for our country off the shores of Libya while flying a plane. And he exemplifies everything that this young man gave. He gave his time, his effort for the environment. He gave his soul to the environment. And it's individuals like Craig Lanzinski who will save this planet for us. Craig. He also gets a $1,000 scholarship. Any more envelopes there for me, Mr. Ruffini? Remind the seniors. Got one thing, seniors, sunglasses to break. You can never, he's retired. He comes back and subs in our building all the time. He's fantastic. Can't take the teacher out of him. He's always reminding a student of something. Uh, I'd like to call up again Patriot Press Award, uh, Mrs. Donna Del Moro. Okay, Mr. P, we may have to write a scathing editorial about our placement on the uh, program tonight, dead last. I don't know if this is any indication of the newspaper business's uh, future, but um, I'll be quick. Most of us in this room are way too young to remember a 60s sitcom called My Three Sons. Well, I allude to that show because of the three young men who form the core of the Patriot Press family and who are about to receive the Journalism Award. Like Fred McMurray's sons in that sweet saga of family life, which of course came way before my time, three, these three students these three students have each contributed in their own special way to the success of our publication and at the same time come under my adoptive wing. Corey Conforth, our design and layout coordinator, I thank you for your spunk, your spark, and your Britney Spears infatuation. You have brought, you have brought some much needed panache to our newspaper's design and even though we fought like Lucy and her right hand man Don, it's been really fun. Steve Parsons, our senior editor, you have brought steadfast loyalty and quiet dedication to the staff and a true desire to seek the truth in all you've written. It's been a pleasure working with you and watching you grow both as a writer and as a student. And last but my, by no means least, Paul Seltzer, our senior editor. You invented the morning Patriot Press news update, and even if I've taken some heat for the politics of those announcements, I applaud you for your cutting edge news style and intelligence that you've brought to our publication. So, Corey. This is my first time attending awards night, so on that note, I just want to say I'm honored to have worked with all three of you boys. Good luck, rock on, and remember, without an informed public, the democracy ceases to exist, and without Britney Spears, the tabloids would be so boring.
This brings us uh, to the close of our ceremonies, and I promised the students up here that I would keep my remarks short, 20, 25 minutes. Um, I, I do have to thank a couple people, and I will, I will be brief. Um, first of all, I need to uh, thank especially Mr. Edward Zambrano, who's the chairperson of the Scholarship and Honors Award. The other members, I would, I'm unsure if they're in attendance, but I would like to mention their names. Mrs. Carol Fattel, Mr. Daniel Fishbane, Mrs. Cynthia Gorkowski, who I know is here, uh, Mrs. Karen Gross, Mr. Charles P. Maeta, Ms. Susan Nagler, Mr. Michael Ruick, Mrs. Bev Seldine, and Mrs. Sue Sikorsky. Thank you so much for your hard work. Um, I, I get the privilege to stand up here and to introduce everyone and to give all these awards out to these outstanding students, uh, your children who you did such a fine job with, um, but I'm really kind of like the front man. Uh, I get all the accolades to be able to stand up front, but it's the hard work of uh, our team, Mrs. Marr, who uh, worked tirelessly to put this night together, our guidance counselors who work so hard our building administration and department chair uh, supervisors who made this night possible. And I want to thank you. I want to congratulate you, the parents, for a fine job, job well done, and students. Thank you. Students, um, I'd just like to charge you to go out there and to continue to making the difference that you have made here at Wayne Hills. Thank you so much. I would like to invite you across the way into the commons for refreshments. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our evening. Thank you.